What's up, everybody? Darius Daniels here. I'm with my incredible wife, Shamika. I feel hey. like I've known you a long time. A long time. I met you, I was like 19 yeah, or so. But don't date us. I'm old. Right. We're my good. God. We're not old. Oh, old. I think I feel old. Anyway, <laughs> listen, uh, speaking of age, yes. what you're about to watch is a segment of mm -hmm. a conversation. I had with some of the young adults that are part of the okay. Change Church family. Yeah. I still consider myself a young adult. They're younger adults. And um, it's going to be, mm -hmm. I think, a conversation that's necessary. I had okay. some courageous conversations with Good. them. Good. All right. Conversations that are necessary, but mm -hmm. I want to warn some people, they may find some of the content okay. a little surprising. Yes. And it may be off-putting for some people mm -hmm. because we have to discuss some things mm -hmm or we discuss some things mm -hmm. in this conversation that that generation right. is dealing with themselves yeah. or that they are dealing with in an attempt to share the gospel yes. with other people their age. Right. And so we That's deal good. with some really tough topics mm -hmm. like racism yeah. and atheism yeah. and a bunch of other isms. Okay. And I attempt to equip them mm -hmm. to be good evangelists That's great. for their generation. Right. And we debunk some myths mm -hmm. about racism and their presence as people of color in the Bible mm -hmm. and things of that particular nature. Right. We want to help strengthen their faith, mm -hmm. but also to help equip them yeah. to be better evangelists to their generation. You know, I think this is so good that you do this because there are many things that we don't talk about in church. Mm -hmm. And so this gives them an opportunity to know what to say, how to say it. And um, and you're just so great at articulating the right way to do things. Yeah. So I just want to thank you for doing that. My God. Come on, you a good person. High five. Yes. Listen, I need to buy you a purse or something. Come on, that was now. Good. Anyway, um, I did want to prepare mm -hmm. you for this. So if this yeah. is the kind of conversation you are interested in, I don't want right. you to be blindsided yeah. by it. But I do believe it's going to help a lot of people. Mm -hmm. These are questions and challenges right. that people in the Christian community, specifically mm -hmm. in the African-American section of the Christian community, right. these are questions they are dealing with. Mm -hmm. And we want them to understand that the Christian faith is a faith for all people. Right. We are a cult of many colors yeah. and God has taken all people and made eight people. Yeah, so one faith, That's one right. Lord, one baptism. Yeah. But we deal with some real tough questions yeah. and it's a really real conversation. Yeah. And so be stimulated, be encouraged, be challenged, but That's most right. of all, be blessed. be blessed. Enjoy. I'm super excited to have this opportunity to have this conversation with y'all. I think it's a, it's always been a very important conversation, but I think it is more important for your generation and for the future of the church. I feel like that your generation has some hurdles evangelistically. There aren't more hurdles, but there are different kinds of hurdles than previous generations have had. And I think it is incredibly important for us to have the kind of discussions about the kinds of things that we don't often get a chance to talk about in local church settings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of them is this whole idea of apologetics. Mm -hmm. And that's a term that comes from a word in the Bible in 1 Peter 3.15. And this is what Peter says. He says, you should always be ready to give an answer slash defense for the hope that's in you. Mm -hmm. And so I think Viewing apologetics from that framework is super important because it helps you see the purpose of it. Right. It's yeah. not to argue. Yeah. It's simply to explain. Yeah. So apologetics doesn't exist or the purpose, the role of, of apologetics is not for us to convince others to believe the way that we believe. Mm -hmm. The purpose is it for us to explain to others why we believe the way that we believe. Yeah. And your answer becomes evangelistic. You don't have to poke holes in people's argument to poke holes in their argument. Right. <laughs> yeah. If you explain your argument well enough, it automatically pokes holes in other people's argument and it leaves them thinking. And that's the goal, right? I'm going to tell you, most people you engage with, there's a pride factor involved. 
and they aren't going to immediately acknowledge right. that your viewpoint is a viewpoint they should consider. Yeah. But when they leave, you probably planted a seed or watered a seed that hopefully God can use later to produce increase. So as, we, so as we walk through this, that's like really one, I think, important piece of advice that I would want to give every younger believer. Don't put the pressure of defending the whole Christian faith on your shoulders because this is, this is the beautiful, this is the blessing and the burden of the gospel is that it is available to everyone, but God gives everyone the right not to receive it. He gives them permission to reject it. And so it's, it's an invitation to live life a better way. But there are people who will reject that invitation. And I think what God does as a just God is he refuses to force a lifestyle on people that they don't want to commit to. And we should do the same thing. So we should encourage people, compel people, be patient with people, yet at the same time refuse to get into arguments with people who simply want to argue their viewpoint and not understand mine. You know, and I think, I think one topic that you just can't avoid, and I think that this was a discussion that definitely had to be had during the Jim Crow civil rights era. Mm -hmm. But now we're seeing a resurgence of it mm -hmm. with the heightened race tensions and race relations that exist here. And there's this, uh, that exists in our context now, and there's this, um, there's, there's a bunch of people in urban communities that really just think Christianity is a white man's religion. Right. Yeah. Is that some of the stuff that y'all heard? Yeah. What are some of the things that, that you've heard, struggle with, wrestle with uh, regarding that subject? Anybody? I hear all the time, like, why would you have a religion where the white man forced that on our ancestors? Mm. Yeah. And basically, Jesus isn't black. Mm. So that's something I try to struggle with with people I can come in contact with. So yeah. I try to answer that. So. Anybody else? Answer? Anybody else had any encounters with thought yeah. processes like that yeah i mean you, you always find like you know even with you speaking in the racial tension of what we have in america now yes yeah. and you hear people say they're christians and that might be of a different ethnicity from us and you you start to think like is our christianity even the same yeah because it's because yeah. if if you if mm -hmm. we both say we're christians but you can do this or allow this to happen to maybe a person of color like what what Christianity are we really believing in? So yeah. as a country, as a, as a complexity, <laughs> is there two different Christianities that yeah. we're seeing? Yeah, man, that is something. Ugh, yeah. I think that's yeah. that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah. 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 I wow. often hear too that, I'm sorry. No, please. I often hear too that it's used to just control us as a people. I've heard that as too. religion, mm -hmm. just like controlling us and what yeah. we believe just to take away our identity. Yeah. So they are convinced that Jesus isn't real and that it's a man-made religion used yeah. to control us as a people. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I've heard I, that too. I hear a lot of times, and, and they go back with slavery. It's just like, oh, they want to, hone in on that scripture, oh, slaves obey your masters, so mm -hmm. all y'all should be obeying your masters or praising God for slavery mm -hmm. and this, this, and that, and I'm like, to me, it just, it's, it's funny, I usually hear that rhetoric from people who actually don't, don't, you know, read or study, but, yes. um, but they, they, they really do like yeah. to hone in on to, onto that, that scripture, I'm like, read context. One, yeah. yeah. One thing yeah. I see is that a lot of uh, black people are not a lot, but a good good amount to talk about other things outside of the church because they're tired of the church. Mm -hmm. So like my um, lactician, she she said today like um, she's into like um, African spirituality. Mm -hmm. my, my ancestors and my, yeah. my grandma. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I pray to them every day. I don't pray to Jesus anymore. It didn't mm -hmm. work for me. And I'm like, what do I say to that? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah like it's it's tough. Tough. one thing to say is right. it's working for me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that these arguments, these these issues and these arguments are so prevalent in urban communities, and they're these are unique issues that uniquely exist in the urban community that have to be talked about if people in urban communities are going to be effective in reaching urban people. Mm -hmm. these, these are evangelistic hurdles that some other people groups don't have to jump over mm -hmm. because their people were not subjugated and enslaved 
in a way that was validated by a religion. You know? I was going to say, I think some of the sentiment that I've heard amongst the black community is that, oh, like whenever there's a, like an issue, a social issue, that somehow Christianity isn't for justice. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. often it's like yeah. when people say pray about it, it's like, oh, are we just going to pray about it? And I think mm -hmm. they feel a sense of discouragement because they don't feel like there's any movements or anything like being led to literally like, you know, deal with those justice, those, yeah. those social justice issues. Yeah. I hear that a lot too. That's a really heavy critique. Yeah. Um, that's that's a heavy critique. There is some legitimacy to that, right? But I think when you paint paint with a broad brush, that's just it's inaccurate. Mm -hmm. This is what I think has happened. People have confused a certain expression of advocating for justice with advocating for justice. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you don't do it this way, you don't care about it the way yeah. we care about it. Yeah. And so yeah. So my my question is, you know, for people who would make that critique is this, is your judgment an informed judgment? Mm -hmm. that, that would be my question. How informed is your judgment? Are you making assumptions about how informed you are? Right. You know, is your, are you making assumptions just from your observation? Or have you actually had conversations with people to see what they're doing? Mm -hmm. I argue, my argument is that justice issues must be approached with two, with, from two lanes. Uh, one, communally, Secondly, systemically. So obviously there's sin in systems and policies and practices that have to be adjusted and addressed. And I think with a lot of um, critics of the role that the church is playing in culture, their assumption and expectation is you do it the way that we do it. Right. You partner with us in the way that we're doing it. Right. Right. As opposed, are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. As opposed to not seeing the moral transformation that's taking place in some people's lives that's causing them not to push the dope, that's causing the crime. Right. That's, you understand? Right. While at the same time, not seeing the conversations that are being had with law enforcement, right. yeah. with governmental officials that you've developed close relationships with. Somebody needs to stand out there and scream. Somebody else needs to sit at the table. Yeah. You know, and so you need both lanes. And I think, I think, you know, it's really, really key and critical that people, that people understand. So for, for me as a spiritual leader, I won't assume I have the right to define the role someone else should play in terms of the way they pursue justice. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I have the authority to write your job description. People in culture feel like they have the authority to write the churches. Yes. And I just reject that. I don't agree with it. I think it's uninformed. And I think people are making assumptions about the church based off of their church. No, say your church not doing nothing. Don't say the church is not doing nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't know what churches are doing. You don't know what conversations are being had. You don't know how people are lobbying in back rooms. And most people don't know how uninformed dominant culture is about the reality of our issues. Right, right. And when, you understand? So you need people attacking this systemically, but you need people sitting down at the table in back rooms that people don't see, explaining things to people right. so that they have a clearer picture of, of what's happening. See? I think another thing that I've heard a lot.